Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. Now before when I did those cheesy transition intros, they were for my ATEM Mini and Mini Extreme videos which were only in 1080, but today I have the Blackmagic ATEM Television Studio Pro 4K switcher, so those cheesy transitions are coming in in tack sharp 4K Ultra HD. So anyways, with this video, I hope to overview what you're getting with this much more professional ATEM model compared to the others that I've reviewed in the past, which were HDMI only and 1080 only, where this is 4K capable and SDI only. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have everything that you need to know to figure out if this is the switcher that you need to run your next live program, or maybe you'll realize that this is actually a little bit too professional for your needs. So anyways, getting right down into the basics, this switcher panel is roughly 17 by 12 inches and weighs about 11 pounds. And the body of this unit has this angled design where most of the panel is on a slight angle until this top part where it's angled much steeper. It's also got two large vents on the side for heat management and the entire surface of the switcher has this nice matte black plastic finish. Okay, for the inputs and outputs, the TV Studio Pro 4K has eight SDI inputs and eight SDI outputs. This means any HDMI source you want to get in here needs to go through an HDMI converter like this one I have right here. Next to those are four more SDI connections for an auxiliary input, a reference in, and two more for output, one for program view and one for multi view. And speaking of that, the only HDMI on this unit is for multi view out for that option too. Next to that are two full-sized XLRs for analog audio in, and next to those are two eighth-inch inputs for headphones and a microphone line. On the other side of all those, and I'll try to use this camera right here to sort of show that, you get an RS-422 port for connecting a remote control head, and next to that you have a network jack, and underneath that is a USB 2.0 port for connecting to a computer. And both of these are going to be very important for connecting to the ATEM software controller. Finally, for power, you get the super common AC input right here, or the option to connect via DC power with this four pin XLR. All right, now I'm gonna go section by section with these groups of buttons here, explaining what they control. So starting up here, this group is for gain control for the eight main inputs, as well as audio follows video and a button to toggle power for each of those. Now over here, this group is all for transitions, with these left four buttons being for a few different transition options, like if you want to mix to the next source, dip to it, or do a pre-programmed effect or logo during it, or invert the transition. Next to that is a regular old number pad for entering values, pretty straightforward. And now moving over here again, this strip here is pretty much a shortcut to queue up sources for up or downstream keying by either cutting directly or using that source to fill in a keyed out layer. You can also do this with a DVE transition or a pre-programmed macro. Okay, jumping just below that, here is where the magic happens. These are your program keys in the top row and your queuing keys in the bottom row. So basically, if you hit a key in the top row, it will hard cut to that source no matter what. Or in the bottom row, clicking on one will queue up that source to be used to transition to. And you can see that they are all numbered for eight SDI inputs, but you can also press shift to access eight more sources that are labeled just above those numbers. All right, next to that, there's this little group for actually making those cuts and initiating transitions. So down here is a cut button that will hard cut to the next queued source, or auto, which will automatically cut to the queued source using whatever transition you have selected. Above that is a hard cut to your key one source, and any of these buttons with the tie underneath basically means that it will link whatever that is to the current source, and whenever that source is cut to again, it will have this applied to it. So if you always wanted one source to have a certain graphic or keying layer on it, you would select one of these. 
And these four down here are to either hard cut or auto transition to your downstream keys one and two. And this dial right here in the middle is for manually transitioning, where all the way up is your next source and all the way down is the previous. So you can do a little DJ action here if you wanna have fun with it. All right, moving on, these four buttons are for four different picture-in-picture -picture options that you can program. And in the very bottom corner is a fade to black, which will override anything with a one-second fade to black. All right, moving on to this upper face of the switcher, which is a bit more vertically facing. A lot of this is basically just physical hardware for a lot of the stuff that the software controller program allows you to do. So starting from the left, these are your eight inputs that you select one at a time if you just want to adjust something. And also below that are the buttons to toggle the direct talk function for channels five, six, seven, and eight. Next to that are a series of buttons for audio, color, and exposure corrections. And next to that are six dials to make those adjustments. And that will change camera settings live, including iris, focus and zoom, but only for compatible Blackmagic cameras at this point. And it wouldn't be a professional Blackmagic product if it didn't have the spinny ball for adjusting those DaVinci color wheels. And next to that is a few hard resets for color adjustments when you're on that page. Okay, one awesome thing I love about this switcher is this small LCD screen right here. Obviously, you wouldn't want to monitor the whole show on this, but it's great to have to just quickly reference the program and master audio. And finally, on the right of that screen is a nice dial to operate the menu, a menu button, and a set button, and you use a combination of those three to navigate the menu. And then weirdly, this button up here is to hard cut to whatever you've assigned to the auxiliary source. Okay, now that we've got the layout covered, I wanna quickly run through some of the more professional functions that you're getting with this switcher, especially compared to the other ones I've reviewed like the ATEM Mini and Mini Extreme. So first of all, you can manage up to eight 4K sources over 12G SDI, all of which allow for a 10-bit 422 signal, and that's basically the biggest thing that I thought was missing from those Mini and Mini Extreme models, which are really, really awesome, beginner-friendly switchers, but I just wanted them to deliver a 4K signal. Also, I want to mention that the audio mixing is really, really great and much more professionally geared and much easier to do right from the board than it was from those other models. And to tack on to that too, I wanna add that having this LCD screen, even though it's small, is really helpful just to quickly reference the program or make setting changes on. And I wish that the A10 Minis had this for sure. So here is one roadblock though that I wanted to mention. I expected to be able to record this whole live streamed program onto an SSD like you were able to do with the A10 Mini Extreme. So not only can it not do that, but it also doesn't have that awesome function where it got all of the video and audio sources in your switcher linked up and organized by folder and it made a DaVinci project file where all of that stuff was synchronized by timecode and it was an absolute dream. So I went into making this video thinking that I was going to be able to edit like that. So what I ended up doing was basically just getting an SSD in the Shogun and recording the whole thing out to here, which is fine, but I was really looking forward to that DaVinci workflow like I was used to with the Extreme. But I do kind of understand because this is a more professionally geared model like for the TV and broadcast world, but I didn't think they would be taking away any major functionality with a switcher that is considerably more expensive than that. But anyways, there is a lot of pro level stuff going on here with this switcher, some that I didn't even get into, but this last thing I want to mention is pretty legit. Audio talkback via SDI. Now, I think that this only applies to certain Blackmagic cameras, but this means if the switcher operator has a headset with mic plugged in, they can selectively talk to a camera operator over that camera's headphone jack, which is really neat and very well suited for the live television slash broadcast world, because that level of communication is absolutely essential for live programming and multicam shoots. So. With all that out of the way, I'm pretty sure that's gonna wrap up this video, overviewing the Blackmagic ATEM Television Studio Pro 4K Switcher. 
So as always, if you have any questions about this model or if you've used this to run a live show, I wanna hear about your experience with it. So drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Whew, I just had to make sure I was on the right camera there. This can get really confusing. So anyways, if you like this video, hit it with a thumbs up button. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel because that way you'll be in the loop whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care and we'll see you in the next one.